This is the story of two friends who set off to Ann Arbor, Michigan to find out what makes Michigan basketball special. Sleever's back, coming to you live from an undisclosed residential location, <laughs> uh, about 30 minutes away from Ann Arbor. Another short home game type road trip for us. We're going to see Michigan host Indiana, Hunter Dickinson, Trace Jackson Davis, and I've been saying for a week and a half, Cart, the Wolverine season is on life support. Why does it always come down to this for Michigan? Like, do you just, you know, love waiting until you're in the weeds and then somehow weasel your way to a Sweet 16 maybe? But you're a little deeper in right now. You're still a next, what, a last four in team at this point? Not probably? even that. Not, Not even, even that. Next four out team. Uh, listen, if Michigan wins this game, I've been told by expert bracketologists that they will officially be in the last four out with a win today. <laughs> in the last And that feels out. great. That feels great. We just need to be back <laughs> in the conversation. Now, if Michigan loses today, if my team loses today, uh, you can essentially stick a fork in the season. It's a big game. Okay. If there's going to be some fork sticking tonight, I will be sticking an effing fork in this program. Last year, we went to one Michigan game together just as fans, just as friends, you could say. Uh, it was Michigan, Illinois. Illinois beat Michigan. Kofi Coburn had a big game. And then you stood outside Chrysler Center with your phone that said, enjoy the NIT. And I will be recreating that photo if they lose today, except I'm going to have CBI on there. But you've got some crap from people. You went to a Michigan State Illinois game. You were in the Illinois student section. You know, people were a little concerned about your fandoms. Make no mistake about it, today you're preying on Michigan's downfall oh, in Ann Arbor. A million percent. I need everything to go wrong for this program today. So I brought two Michigan jerseys with me. One is Ignis Prezdakis. Handsome, well, handsome Squidward, as some like to call him. One is Hunter Dickinson. You've said. You are a Hunter Dickinson fan. You relate in a lot of ways to Hunter Dickinson. I do. If Michigan wins this game, will you wear the Hunter Dickinson jersey after the game? No. If Hunter Dickinson goes for 25 and 10 and Michigan wins this game, will you wear the Hunter Dickinson jersey after the game? No. <laughs> There's just no way? No. He would have to go for 50. If Hunter Dickinson gives you 30 and 30 and uh, let's call it 30 and 12. 30 and 12 in a victory. 30 and 12, I will put on a jersey for like five minutes. And a victory, 30 and 12 in a victory. Other subplot of this, Hunter Dickinson has been in communication with us. We were exchanging messages this week in hopes to get Hunter on this very episode of College Hoops to go in some fashion. Sounds like that may happen, fingers crossed. We'll see if a Michigan win happens, that would make it more likely. But he did have one condition, he had a demand in order for us to end up meeting with him and get him on camera. Do you want to share what that condition was? I actually don't. <laughs> you're not going to? Because I'm going to if you're not going to. I do not want to share what the condition was. Hunter's condition was that Carter has to tweet that Hunter has already had a better college career than Michigan State legend Cassius Winston. Do you want to share if those terms were agreed to or not? I agree to the terms. I just, I, just, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like my Twitter being built on lies. If you're a Michigan fan, do you not want to see your best player on the episode? I'm glad you always have the interests of Michigan fans in your heart. Okay. First priority. Now you can cut it. It's been a lot of snow. It's been a lot of ice. It's been a lot of cold. You can see your breath everywhere we go. Champaign, Lincoln, Iowa City, all these places. It's been freezing. Now all of a sudden. It's 50. Michigan needs a win to make the NCAA tournament. The skies have opened up. The sun is out. You could say the air today has a hint of maze to it, Carter. And you know what all that's going to lead to? A half-empty Chrysler. As we got closer to Ann Arbor, one of us felt at home. One of us did not. You don't feel at home in Ann Arbor. No, never do. You don't feel at home unless you, uh, unless you went to Michigan. The leaders in the best? Is it like an ego thing? Is it like a... Because we will say this, like, we've been welcomed in with open arms as media everywhere else we've went on this trip. We didn't get credentials at Michigan. No, we didn't. We're not good enough for Michigan, apparently. No no credentials, no, no recommendations. Admissions did not let us through. <laughs> Ann Arbor's a beautiful college town with plenty to explore. But for us, with only a few hours until game time, we had to check in at Graduate Ann Arbor. A couple of Wolverine legends here, Cart. Oh, didn't see you there. 
Welcome to Graduate Man Arbor. As you can see, amazing blue pillows, of course, because <laughs> what other colors even matter in the world, I guess? And then we have a little view of downtown Ann Arbor. So I don't want to throw any shots, but we did not get this hospitality in East Lansing, Cart. What do we got here? Oh, you got to have these type of amenities when the room's not as nice as the other graduates. This isn't, okay, you know what? That's a They're glass fading. bottle Topo Chico. Okay. The cherry cover beans, that, that's clearly a Traverse City thing. That's not an Ann Arbor thing. They can't fool Michigander. They might be able to fool out-of-towners with this, but this is a Traverse City thing. Sleepers have officially touched down in Ann Arbor. For the game that some are saying is going to decide Michigan's season, uh, they're currently not even on the bubble. If they get this win, I think they're on the next four out or one of those categories you don't want to be on. Let's check in with Greg and see if he's locked in for the game. Greg? Yeah, if we get the win today, we're on the bubble officially. Biggest game of my life. Definitely biggest game of the year. I'm prepared. I hope Hunter Dickens is prepared. You're terrified. I can see the look in your eyes. That's all I'm saying. I'm not terrified because there's two things in life that don't strike fear in me, and that's maize and blue. I mean, they say there's nothing like a degree from Michigan. With only a few hours until tip, there were plenty of Hoosiers that made the trip to Ann Arbor. But with such a big game approaching, we shouldn't have been surprised. We were ready for a bite to eat and a beverage, so we made our way across Michigan's beautiful campus to the Brown Jug, a favorite of Wolverines everywhere. When you step foot in the Brown Jug, you realize there have been plenty of Wolverine legends on and off the field. For Carter, it wasn't exactly fun to look at. But for me, I was starting to feel perfectly at home. Realizing something very important, we're vets now. Like, this is our seventh trip in this 10 trip escapade. And the first six, like, we were kind of getting our bearings. We were learning how this works. We were just happy to be here. There's no happy to be here. We're upperclassmen. We're here to make a march run. We realized we couldn't wear our backpacks because we're not media today. We just ordered chicken fingers, a seltzer bucket, because last time we were here a year ago as just fans, it took a long time. And now my favorite song's playing on the speaker and that's just serendipity. There's no chance Michigan loses this game. Well, that was quite dramatic. There's a great chance they lose this game. They're not a good team. They're around the 50 range in Ken Palm, but at least Gregory's feeling good about himself. One problem though, I just walked that way to the bathrooms and the entire room is Hoosiers. We were joined by on three's Anthony Broom, who told us what to expect for the big game. I'm very nervous for this game. Obviously I'm the Michigan fan here. It feels like the entire season is on the line. Like I, I think we can actually stick a fork in this team as far as NCAA tournament hopes go if they lose this game. Is that fair to say? I don't know if I'd go that far just because, you know, when you look at their schedule down the stretch, there's still some, some quad one wins there to be had, but it's almost like you have this game today, and it's it's the bird in the hand, right? You get this one today, Ken Palm basically has his point flip game. You win a game like this, and they're not on the bubble yet. You win this game, though, I think you can start having that bubble conversation, and there's some some merit to this idea that this team might have a pulse and have a, you know, have a play at the postseason here down the stretch. What's the energy going to be like in Christ? Because I'm looking around, I mean, we're in the brown jug right now for the don't know. I'm looking around. I see a lot of crimson. You could call it the crimson jug right you now. You could call it a lot of crimson. crimson. You could maybe make it a stretch and call it the crimson jug. What, what's the energy going to be like in Christ? Yeah, I mean, I think there's no, there's no question that, that that atmosphere is not, let's just call it what it is, it's not Breslin Center. It's not you know, it's not like going down to Bloomington. It's not like going to Iowa or some of the tougher places. Um, it might be like Iowa. We went to Iowa. It was bad. But it was, it was a Sunday. Sunday. It was Sunday. It was, it was empty, though. So oh, yeah. I'm hoping it's like Iowa, at least. <laughs> at least. Yeah, I, I mean, I bet if you look around here, I mean, there's probably going to be, I'd say probably 15, 20% Indiana fans and those They'll be loud because they came. You know, you, you make the trip up this way. You drive. I've made that drive right eight or nine times over the last two years. Just throw the media events down, 
by Indianapolis. And that's a boring ass drive. <laughs> <laughs> so you come all the way up here, you're a diehard. Yeah, you, um, you want it. So I think that uh, I think Michigan fans will. I think the energy in there will be good today. I think that there's a a knowledge of, of what's on the line. I think that um, at times, I mean, I remember four or five years ago with some of those late era Beeline teams. That place is as loud as that. You know, when those fans are engaged and locked in, and there's a winning product taking place. They are as loud and as into it as anywhere I've been. Um, but you know, you. Uh, when you have, you know, a couple days ago, you have Robbie Hummel on TV commenting how quiet you hear a pin drop in price. Then again, it was a 6.30 tip against Nebraska. But, um, you know, you want to be known as one of those top-tier atmospheres. You got to bring it the same when you're playing Ohio for the Mac as when you're playing Ohio State for the Big Ten. Still at the Brown Jug. Surprise, surprise. We're here longer than expected. Uh, we're here with Cam and Dean. Clearly Hoosiers clearly made the drive to get a win today. I got to be honest, I was not worried about not getting a win today until I saw the two of you. You expect a Hoosier win? I think so. I think TJ Gee gets the best of Dickinson tonight for the first time since... Ever, ever. ever. Hasn't no, really I happened. I would say he's had his number, but I think tonight it's over. I mean, Doug's a generous 5'11". Who is he going to guard? That's the real question out there. Jalen Hutchifino. Who does he need to guard? Jalen Hutchifino. Hutchifino's 25% in road games. Hutchifino's on self-check tonight. How afraid or unafraid of Juwan Howard are you? I'm going to keep it down. I don't want to get hit in the face. I mean, it, it is a threat. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, Greg Gard didn't catch it clean. If he did, he would have been done. Are we sure that Mike Woodson is not in his afternoon nap right now? I don't think he is. I think he's getting the boys ready right now. Don't talk to me like that. I'm not getting in the car. I'm not getting in the car. I will not get in the car. As Carter and I were starting to get more and more combative, we made the short drive to the Chrysler Center. Along the way, we took in the views of the Big House and Michigan's other athletic facilities. Once we made our way into the arena, I had my game face on and ready. If I hit this, we're going to the Elite Eight. If you hit this, you guys are making a tournament. How about that? I think it's a whole minute? I just need one. I need one shot for the Elite Eight. And you're going to miss. You have one, and you got to shoot from the carpet, too. I'm in the house that Nick Stouse gets built. You, you got to miss. You got to shoot from the carpet. I will shoot from the carpet. I will make, and we will go to the Elite Eight, and you will lose in the second weekend. I can't believe you made that. That's the horn for tip off. This place is empty. Please pan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Center for the 107th season of Michigan basketball. In tonight's Big Ten Conference matchup featuring. This 
man eating our own popcorn. Look at this shit. He's eating my popcorn. He's happy to be here. Excuse me. Excuse me, Malik. At halftime of such a tense game, we made our way to the court level to see what the students were feeling like. I'm really unhappy with the way the first half ended. Michigan should be up 13. They're not. Uh, you have tissues. That's ridiculous. We don't need those. What I did get is an armband in honor of Kobe Bufkin, who is league right now. We don't need to wait 16 months. Like I said, he's league now. He can go. If we win this game, he can go. That's fine. I need less nepotism. I need a little less Jet. I need a lot less Jace. I could use a little less Jawan, to be honest, but that seems unlikely. Bottom line, we're a lot better than Indiana. Our season's on the line. Again, we should be up 13. We're only up four. This is where Hunter Dickinson makes his Michigan moment. Up here. Hey, I can't wait. I'm thinking we put Jet in a gate screen through Jace and another Jace. We'll, we'll clone Jace to the timeout, and then we'll put Janine in the corner, and maybe Jawan can run point. We'll see if Jet can hit this one. Well played. Well played. Congrats, boys. Y'all might host a game in the NIT. NIT? Yeah, CBI. We're going to the CBI, my brother. As always, we have to buy something at the store. I bought these, and it's fitting. There you go, bud. No matter what, I'll always be here for you to wipe your tears. Ow. <laughs> How's your old fashioned? Tastes like John Beeline, which is to say it's good and it'll be gone too soon. As my dark day in Ann Arbor quickly turned to a nightmare of an evening, we made our way to Pizza House, where Carter hoped to turn my spirits around. And while one of us was happy, one of us was not and it was easier said than done for me to pick my spirits up. Hey, Carter here. You're probably wondering why I have the microphone right now. Well, that's because Gregory's night did not take a turn for the better. It was nothing but sadness. But as a friend, I had to make sure that we put this sadness to bed and end this trip the only way I know how to bury a Michigan wristband and bury the hopes of Michigan basketball this season. All good things must come to an end. For Trey Burke. For Nick Stauskas. For Tim Hardaway Jr. For Zach Irvin. For Isaiah Livers. Mo Wagner, for Jordan Poole, for that rat John Beeline.